A-A Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A-A Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A-A Ron! A.A. Run is present. Reese, I think my audio is not set up correctly on my speaker, so let me fix that. Can you say something to me? Yeah, testing. I hear you just fine. You no, know, I had to make sure I was hearing you in my earpiece. Welcome, everybody. Welcome, welcome uh, for some more SPTV. Guys, you know who done messed up. You guys know who done messed up. Kathy Sullivan Auto done messed up. Dan Daniel Thomas O'Connor done messed up. David Miscavige done messed up too. Let's be honest. I mean, <laughs> uh, that's that's just a, a given every single day. For for those of you who's tuning in, you see that the title of this thing is part four. Now, look, if you guys haven't seen parts one, two, and three, those are linked in the description down below. Check those out later. Um, we are. Let, let me give um for those who haven't watched all three parts. Uh, Reese, give, give like a little nutshell description of who. We're about, about to listen to and, and why. Just a brief description of the context here. So this is Kathy Sullivan Otto. She was a longtime friend. She now lives in Clearwater. She was on staff for a very long time at the Church of Scientology, Kansas City with me. Uh, very high up executive. The, the sister of Dan O'Connor. That's very important. Her brother is Dan O'Connor. The guy who wrote the email last weekend to Aaron. The guy who hit me over the head with a fax machine. Um, and Kathy and I were longtime friends. I've known her since I was six years old. And she's having a conversation with me in these recordings about uh, my just being found out. Aaron accidentally putting my flashing my name up on the screen back in January. Um, yep. So she's the first person to call me. And she's pretending like, I just happened to see this. I had no idea. What are you doing talking to Aaron? When we all know, if you've listened to these, you can pretty much tell that she didn't see it. I question her on it too. I kind of grill her about it. Um, that, that it's pretty clear that Osa and flag reached out to her and said, you need to call and talk to her and get these questions answered on what she knows and what she's planning to do. That's right. So then Kathy calls Reese to pretend like she just happened to see me flash Reese's name for like a quarter of a second on a screen. Totally unbelievable. Like there's no way Kathy, for one, there's no way Kathy watches my videos. For two, there's no way if she was watching the videos that she would have just happened to see that. But so she calls Reese to confront her on this very uncomfortable truth that she seems to be in touch with me. And Reese, uh, instead of denying it in any way, is like, oh yeah, I know Aaron. Yeah, yeah, I met Aaron about six months ago. We've been chatting. <laughs> and, yeah. and Kathy doesn't know what to do about this. And Kathy is basically saying uh, to Reese, what can I do to make you feel no longer angry with science? What can I do to keep you from talking to Aaron Smith-Levin? What can I do to resolve your upsets with Scientology so that you'll stop talking to Aaron Smith-Levin? And... And, and, and so in this call, parts one, two, and three, you've told Kathy about some horrible abuses you've suffered in Scientology, including, including physical assaults you've suffered at the hands of Kathy's own brother, Dan O'Connor. And we're entering into the conversation here at a point where Kathy's basically making a bunch of analogies that some things cannot be made good and you just have to move on. Mm-hmm. And that's kind of where we're entering the conversation. Do you think that's a good, that's good enough for us to hit play? I think here? that's good enough. I want to say um, there's one part where if you guys go back, claws um, that um, I just I don't know why I don't know why I need to to highlight this, but Aaron, it's it does show she I do catch her lying because at the time, guys, I was in Aaron's phone in the contacts under Reese Casey, and when Kathy when I question her about this. She goes, I just saw him flash up your name, uh, Reese Quabel. And she goes, I don't remember. I, I have to get used to that being your last name. And I said, well, how my last name wasn't Quabel, though, in his phone. It was Reese KC. And she just like dodges that. And she's like, oh, I, I don't know. I don't know. I just saw it. Um, and then, yeah, we just finished wrapping up yesterday. The whole story I tell that she denies knowing about that her brother hit me, sent me to a hospital after that. I was peeing blood. And um, not once, not once did she say that's terrible or I apologize for that. Um, she just goes forward with these weird analogies and says, um, people basically, Aaron, don't you think what you just covered? Like people make mistakes and some things just can't be repaired. And 
when you break your grandma's super important base from Italy from a hundred years ago, you just kind of have to move on from it. That's right. That's right. Yeah. That's more or less where we are at right here. And um, you ready and, to oh, rock and roll? Yeah, we're ready to rock and roll. We're wrapping this this whole conversation with Kathy up today. Mm -hmm. There is, I want Aaron, we should explain how we finish this conversation and we go into a new one. Mm -hmm. So we finish this conversation, I think is like another 15 to 20 minutes. Mm -mm. This entire so rest of the conversation is Kathy. Right, no, no, no. The whole thing's 44 minutes like we talked about. But the end of this call ends in like 15 minutes. And then remember, a new call starts the same day. She calls me back the same day and says she went to the MAA, her, her oh, ethics officer. Oh, 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 oh. So I, I didn't know that till last night. I was eating dinner and listening to it. And, and I was like, oh, I thought these next three audios were all together. Like the first three we just four li we listened to. Um, this one is about to end in 15 to 20 minutes. And then we're going to go through to the next. It's the same day, but she calls me back hours later after she went to flag and like tells me what she found out. I just wanted right. to preface it with that. Okay, cool. Ready to rock? Ready. All right. I don't know how I, I could come up with lots of things, but you know, if you've stolen gum from the grocery store and you bring back gum or go pay them, you've made up the exact damage. The time that Spencer threw a snowball when he was a kid at the school gym board with other boys and they knocked out some of the lights. I walked Spencer into the principal and the principal said, yeah, each light costs a dollar 20 or whatever it was. And Spencer out of his own money paid the principal and told him what he did wrong. That was good enough. <laughs> well, yeah, I get what you mean on the liability thing. Yeah, so that's where you come in. I think if you can find some way of expressing yourself and demand might be a harsh word, but insist that some particular thing is said or done to your satisfaction. Um, it's not for the purpose of shutting you up, but keeping you from feeling like you need to be in a fight about it, asserting that something should be done about something because something's been done about it, not because you've been shut up. That's what I'm saying. I don't know if that's possible. I know what you're saying, but I don't know that that's possible. I don't know that what can be done about it. I don't know that we're going to stop getting calls that are like, I got this report here that your dad calls you two and a half percenter. You don't seem like that to me. Right. It's just constant triggers. It's like, yeah, that's, that's not really appropriate what you just said, I guess I just expect more. It's a, from a group that calls themselves, you know, pretty elite out of the mud more than others, better than the rest. Then fucking show me that. Don't yeah. show me a bunch of Dave Sutters and Gene Wallies because they're fucking duds. I mean, you are talking to better than that. <laughs> I don't know. right now on the phone with somebody who <laughs> can you make a t-shirt that says you're talking to better than that. You're talking oh. to someone better than that. I don't not, not understand. I don't not understand. <laughs> um, guys, if my Wi-Fi goes out and they get me again, I told Aaron to just go forward with this. <laughs> I, that's another thing I meant to say for those that haven't seen the first few, Aaron and I, how long have we been doing videos a month now? Something no problems. Like I've lived in this house for two years, never had a problem. The last two days that we've released these audio recordings, my Wi-Fi keeps going out. So if that happens, go on without me. I'm back in the ice. Not today, Thayton. Not today, Thayton. <laughs> did improve with Scientology, did get help with Scientology. And I'm not saying that. To, I mean, I know you don't want me to like rub that in. or That doesn't or bother me, Kathy. That doesn't bother me. I know you've had real success. I haven't. When I hear Brenda say, well, he's not trained or he's not clear. That's a bunch of bullshit. The guy could attest to OT 15 this afternoon. He's still not going to admit that he has children or he's going to say that they're <laughs> his words, the most degraded beings on planet earth. Can you pause it for a he minute? He equates. Does anybody else notice that she laughs every time that it's uncomfortable and awkward? Like she laughed at that. I was, I was obviously upset there and like said, that's a bunch of bullshit. He could attest to this and he still won't like, she laughed at the fact. I just think that's, 
a weird thing going. I haven't listened to these over again till last night, by the way, guys, I do kind of go in circles. It gets a little boring because she makes me, she's, she's kind of weird and gaslighty and I don't understand her analogies. So there's a lot of like, um, okay. And I kind of repeat myself, but I just want to, I just wanted Aaron. I just wanted to pause on that. I just think it's so weird when people laugh at like inopportune moments when they, nothing's funny. Yeah. Yeah. And no point in this conversation does she ever acknowledge the seriousness of the things that are being discussed, except for when she thinks it might get you to feel like she's a friend and uh, just whatever she could possibly do or say to get you to stop talking to me. But otherwise, she doesn't show any actual recognition for the severity of what you guys of what you're discussing. Yes, right there. Her laugh is belittling. I agree. Yeah. Anyway, we can go on. Sorry. No worries. It's me to Hitler. That's ridiculous. I got it. Something he equates me to Hitler. That's ridiculous. Something should be done about that. I don't know what. I'm not a Scientologist. I don't know what you guys would do for that, whatever, you know, would come of that. But it's not okay to me that he just keeps celebrating, you know, because he keeps donating money. Right. I want to figure out something to do about that. Okay. Okay. And I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk to my MAA about that. Um. And I, yes, I just don't know. I can't come up with any ideas to what possibly could be done about that. I think what they're gonna tell me is, Reese, look, we're sorry this happened to you, but you need to shut the fuck up because you're gonna get declared. You can't talk about our transgressions. Nobody's gonna threaten you, Marisa. I'm gonna be your person, and I really just don't want you to talk to anybody else about it anymore. Will you do that for me? Sure, but I think Brenda knows. That's fine. I'm gonna get a hold of Brenda. I'm gonna get a hold of the MAA and I'm start figuring out what I can do about something. And, um, and I'm like. 99% sure that you communicating with Aaron Smith-Levin and what he put on that video is not anywhere in the ballpark of getting you declared. If there's something more you need to tell me so I can head it head on do it, but you told me there's nothing else. There's nothing else he so, knows. I mean, he knows my upset with my dad. He doesn't give a shit about that. He knows more than what was on that text, of course. He knows that I have upsets in Scientology, but he has never talked about it. Okay. Um, I didn't watch anything else that he did because in that moment, I there's, was like, as far as I know, there's right. nothing with me on it because I don't have any newsworthy stuff. Now, when you say if there's not something else I need to know, tell me, I'm telling you right now, Aaron Smith Levin knows details about my being on staff when I was uh, joined when I was 13. Um, he knows I was in the cadet org. Um, okay. I don't know. So, I mean, he knows things like that, but there's, I can't think of anything. I mean, you were in a cadet one? Yeah. Yeah, it was a fucking prison. When did you go to a cadet or? When I was seven. Oh, that's why I don't know. She's uh, in her mind. She's making a, a list of all the things you could go public about. And she's like, "Uh oh, cadet org. I didn't know that. Also, just do you hear me say it was a fucking prison. And she just goes, oh, OK. Nothing is shocking to her. And like, I don't know. I think that's sorry. I'm just checking the camera. It says motion front door, guys. Just just being paranoid now at this point. Um, nothing. That's a normal human being would e have empathy, would would have a reaction. Do you guys notice? Nothing is shocking. I was seven. It was a fucking prison. Oh, okay. I'm just writing this down. Right. Nothing. Oh my God. What happened? Oh my God. Cause, Cause this is all about her. Yeah. Cause she wouldn't, aside from the fact that she already knows exactly what it means to be in the cadet org, she wouldn't want to know like Scientologists don't want to know the bad news. Don't tell me, no. don't tell me, don't tell me. No. And if you have bad news, it's because you did something to pull that. I mean, you did something against the organization. What did yeah. you do to Scientology to pull that in? Right. Yeah. How'd you, how'd you go there? Um, when my mom left and married Jeff Kittinger, my dad put our house up for sale and said, we're going, we're going to Clearwater to live. And your dad joined the Sea Org? Yeah. And he took me and Brianna and uh, the day we got there, we were all split up and we were there for nine months. I never saw either one of them ever again. And it was a fucking prison. I hated it. 
and I got really sick and I threw up all the time. And then my dad woke me up at like three o'clock in the morning, nine months later. And he was like, shh, we're leaving. (laughs) And we went and got Brianna out of her little room with her people. And we somehow got into his Pontiac GTO that he drove down and we put the top down and drove the fuck home and our house was still for sale. (laughs) So we just took it off the market. There's things I don't know, huh? Yeah. Yeah. So, right. um, so yeah. Aaron knows uh, some stuff when you're on staff, the cadet org, upset with your dad. Yeah. I'm trying to think what else he knows. Um, I mean, I've talked to him physically taught like on the phone twice and both times were probably 10 minutes. So I crammed it all into that. I don't think he really cared about that. I think he probably wants real newsworthy stuff that he can like press charges or, um, Oh, well, he probably wants more PT stuff. Right. I don't know. Guys, PT means present time. And by the way, guys, I knew Aaron cared. I was trying to downplay this. I was definitely like, I don't think Aaron gives a shit. Like, I, I was, as much as I don't seem like it in this call, I was very, this was the first call. This was the very first person that reached out and said, hey, you've been found out. So I was trying to remain very calm and very casual about like, I don't think Aaron Smith 11 gives a shit. He's too big to care about this. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, and as a similar analogy, when I was still in the Sea Org and my brother, who'd already been declared a suppressive person, died in a car accident, I had to downplay it to my fellow Sea Org members that it wasn't really a big deal and it didn't really, it's not a big deal. It's more of a nuisance, you know, because you have to downplay it. Otherwise, it's going to look like there's something wrong with you. Right. You have to kind of side with being a Scientologist, I was just going to say, didn't someone even say like, don't, you don't need to go to the funeral. Oh, they weren't going to let me go to the funeral. They're like, Oh, he's just an SP. Why would you bother going? He's just an SP, you know, that gives me chills. Yeah. And so I had to downplay it. Like instead of going, well, I want to go because he's my brother and it's important to me. I have to go, Oh, it would create a bad PR with the family. If I didn't go, I don't, I don't really want to go, but I should, you know, that kind of, right. So my only option here was either to go Aaron Smith Levin gives a shit and we're going to do something about it or, he doesn't care. He doesn't care about my story. He wants something newsworthy. So yeah. I, I chose the better path for me at the time. Yeah, totally. No, I think he wanted to know if the, the Shane thing is statutory rape by law. And I think he wanted uh-huh. to know if the um, statute of limitations is lifted in Missouri. I have no idea. I didn't look into it. Because that what was, was the statutory rape. Well, Shane and I were sleeping together when I was 14. Um. It's- and Shane was a staff member, right? Shane was a staff member and I slept with him the whole two years I was on staff. And um, I love I love her acknowledgement here because she admits to it. So if anybody wants to send any more emails going, none of that actually happened, pause and wait for her reaction right here. Yeah, yeah. And by the way, this wasn't a secret relationship. Everybody knew it was oh, yeah. condoned, you know. Okay. Everybody knew. It went on for two years. What year was that? When I was 14. Um, it's a good what year was that? Um, 98. That sounds right to me, too. How old was Shane? Like 30. Oh. So he was between, I think, like 29 and 33 or 4. I don't know exactly what his age was, but... Um, I mean, it doesn't seem like that would be of any interest to Aaron. Shane's not been a Scientologist for a really long time. No, I think he was just more like, see, this is what I mean. All the staff knew about it. Pretty much everyone would have gone to jail for that. No one cared. And I was like, mm, yeah. I see. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I don't have any PT stuff. Obviously, I have no PT stuff. I'm not looking. My intent is not to sue Scientology or take them down like his is. All right. I just hate That's my beef. Oh. That's my beef. I've never had a, I've never had a, uh, I mean, do I love that you have upsets, the stuff with Gene, you know, if I, no, I don't love that. If I could fix them, I would fix them and I will do what I can now far too late to do something about them that might possibly help with grandma's vase that cannot possibly be put back together or bought anywhere. You know? Yeah. But I don't feel I like you need to do that. Kathy, I'm not asking you to do that. I don't need you to do that. And do make that clear, whoever you talk to. I'm not interested in 
calling the police or going out and talking about it with any, I'm not going to, I don't know, press charges or what have you. I just have a lot of hatred toward things that have happened and we're just swept under. Good. And I want to move that forward in some way that makes you feel like you don't have to fight to talk to Aaron Smith Levin, to get it put on YouTube to, you know, whatever. And I understand why you did that. Okay. I do. Yeah. And you know, your MAA may already know about this because I did talk to that. I would say that was six weeks ago. Oh yeah. Sophia. And she asked me, she was like, what do you want to see happen to Scientology? Do you want to like, Yeah, did she know about the video that, well, because no, because it was before that. Ago. Right. No. Yeah. yeah. But um, she did ask me if I wanted like to see Scientology harmed. And I said, no, I want people to fucking have to own up for what they did. I said, I'm not interested in people going to jail. I'm not interested in telling the authorities. I just feel like you guys should fucking fix your inside shit. I agree with you. OK, I want to try to help. How long did you um, not how long, but how did you initially make connection with Aaron, was it through Facebook, on a phone call, email? Yeah, through Brianna. Through she had me talk to him through Facebook. What a weird segue, and I'm only going to interrupt for a few seconds here. Remember, everyone, Kathy is contacting Reese, pretending that no one in Scientology has asked her to do this, that she's just calling as a friend out of the goodness of her heart. She was terribly concerned when she saw Reese's name flash up in my text messages in, in a video real quick. And so she, look at how abruptly she changes from yeah. talking about something important. That? Yeah, talking did about something notice? important too. Now, how did you originally make contact? Yeah, did you notice that she was like, I was really upset for a second. And she goes, I know, and I want to help. Now, how did you, um, it was like, she had a list that, oh, so I'm sure they, they coached and drilled her on what to say, but like it was, you can tell she had a list. You yeah. can hear her writing. So it's yeah. like Aaron said, it's so spur of the moment phone call, really. And the other thing, since we're paused, I'm like, I'm getting like, I'm getting really upset. I can tell my body's like sweating. I'm, I'm mad that she, I go through the whole thing about Shane she agrees with it. Like, it's just no big thing. I mentioned statutory rape, people going to jail. And what does she do? She's just very, I said, look, Kathy, I'm not going to sue. I'm not. And she goes, that's my beef. That's what she said. I said, I'm not looking to sue. She goes, that's my beef. Exactly. That's your beef. Your beef isn't that it was a 14 year old kid. Cause my kid will be 14 in November. And I would burn some shit to the ground. Like I would be unstoppable. You you would have to probably kill me. Right. So it's crazy right. to me. That's your B. I mean, Aaron, how you have a kid close to my age, don't you? I, I mean, I've got a, a 16 year old, a 14 year old, and a 12 year old. 14 and year old. So close. Oh, 12 year old. So I right in between. Huxley's yep. 13. Yep. 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 Like it just makes me feel so fired up. If 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 anything. If they fair game my child in any way, if any go anything goes forward, I can't I can't even explain the fury. Yeah. And the thing is, she's like, that's my beef. Kathy, what in the world makes you think this phone call is about you? Like you're you're this is nothing to do with Kathy Sullivan Auto. It's about Reese. And Kathy's like, well, that's my beef. We didn't call Reese didn't call your ass. You called her. That's your beef also because all you're interested in doing is protecting yourself and your church. That's she was admitting to that. That's my beef. I said, I'm Kathy. I'm not going to sue. That's my beef. Yeah. Oh, um, good. Glad we're clear. Unbelievable. Okay. And um, does he have stuff in writing or just your conversation? Just my conversation. So just the two yeah. times. Okay, fine. And he didn't put you in touch with anybody else. No. <laughs> okay. So um, are you willing to never talk to Aaron again? If we can make some kind of headway on this and, you know, keep things not a problem family wise and stuff. I mean, probably I don't know the guy that well. I don't feel like he's like a family friend or anything, but that's all he is I now for me between you. And this is about you and me right now. Okay. Yeah but I'm also not going to follow the rules. Like I'm a Scientologist, like as far as, yeah, I don't, I don't have much to say to the guy anyway, is what I'm saying. He's not like a, I know, I know that that's not, that's not, that's not really what I'm saying. I'm saying to you right now, Hey, remember Jane, 
a girl who wants to fucking take me out, who tries to beat me up every day, every time, and, and the things I love every time she gets a chance. Well, if you and me are really good friends, I don't know how you can be friends with her and be friends with me at the same time. That's what I'm really saying to you. For the listeners, Jane refers to just an analogy that Kathy made in the last phone call about high schoolers. Which she knows <laughs> like, nothing about because none of us went to high school. That's the funny part about that analogy. That, that's right. Like you Jane. were there. <laughs> I know. None of us went to high school. None of the nope. three of us. <laughs> nope. That's it. That's between you and me. And that's me deciding on my own code of honor before I even call an MAA saying, can I, do I want to remain in a relationship with Marisa? And I do. All right. I know what you're saying. Okay. I'm saying this between you and me. This has nothing to do with Brenda, Fiona. You know, that's a different thing. And I will call my MA and see what I can do to help with all of that. I appreciate you doing this, but Kathy, I also am like, I'm so Gene Wally about this stuff. Jeff tells me this all the time. Like I am so willing to give up and disconnect from anything and anyone. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be a kind of a weirdo and say something else. I also don't believe it's good for you. I believe I'm good for you. (laughs) <laughs> no. so dumb. what did she just say i believe I'm i don't good believe for it's you? good for you i believe i'm good for you oh my god gas light oh my god predator i think you're good for me too but what i'm saying is like i'm willing to lose everyone i know that's a terrible thing to oh, say no, what though what do you accomplish by losing us it's like you're pushing me away instead of just saying i'm willing to lose you there's a different thing this isn't on me this is on you this isn't me going i don't want to be friends with marisa i'm begging you to not do that based on your rules is what i'm saying based on like not there it's my personal if 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 uh god how how do i explain this to you it seems she sounds just like amber heard right now She's I, she's blaming me. Do you notice this? How do I explain totally. this to you? This totally. isn't this is young you. This isn't me. Oh my god. I'm gonna rewind like ten seconds. So obvious to me, and I'm sure you get personal. It if I if if uh God how do I how do I explain this to you? It seems so obvious to me, and I'm sure you get it. Like, um if I were right now to become good friends with Gene Wally, it would change your friendship with me. Forever. No, it wouldn't. So many people are friends with Gene Wally. That wouldn't bother me. Amanda O'Connor and Dan O'Connor love his shit all the time. You are not you are not friends with Amanda and Dan the way that I am. That is correct and will always be true. <laughs> no, the way that I am with you. Right. No, I know. I'm just saying it doesn't bother me. That wouldn't bother me. I'm saying I'm willing to lose everyone if I were to get an SP to Claire and it was not stoppable and you couldn't do anything about it. I know okay, well, you need to what stop I'm... being willing to lose everyone. You need to stop being willing to lose everyone. Well, please. I think that comes because from it's... my background. <laughs> it's very. Okay. That's I get a... that. I get why you're where you're at, but that's not a threat that's actually going to be made. Okay. Over what has but the disconnection been... policy is over our heads as Scientologists all the fucking time. I've literally never had it used over my head. To me, that's a complete and total internet spread. Oh fuck! Not for me growing up. Type of shit. I know. I, that's why I said, sadly for you and me, you have not moved along and progressed as Scientology progressed. Does that make okay the overs that Scientology has? Blah, blah, blah. No, but things do grow. They do change. I mean, are you the same person you were when you were 16 no, years old? And, but the right. policy is the same, right? Things haven't changed. Yeah, the there. policy can be misapplied by people doing stupid shit. And I've misapplied policy doing stupid shit. I've probably thought, you know, gosh, when I divorced David and that whole thing went down, I thought that if I got a divorce, I would probably get in trouble. I never got in trouble. Stuff I thought was going to happen never happened. I feel, I want to tell you this. I feel 100% free today on OT7 to say whatever I truly think and whatever I truly feel without any fear of what would happen. Oh, my God. <sighs> Which makes sense because you, would, you wouldn't step outside of the what you're supposed to step outside of anyway, though. What are Uh-oh. you going to truly okay. say that's going to violate anything? I mean, I see things wrong too, Reese. Okay. I mean, when I'm, I see things wrong, I I say something. I'm I'm intense about. It. I'm an, I would say I'm an intense person. Okay. So I'm not trying to say you're wrong. We have a road ahead of us, but no, I don't think you'll be declared over this. I think that. Um, 
you know, I can put this communication on the line and try to do something to help, especially toward Gene Wally. Maybe some acknowledgement from Dan over that thing. I have no idea because I wasn't, I mean, I don't even want to acknowledge it occurred myself, except for to acknowledge you. I did not know about it. I don't really want to hear from Dan. I don't want that acknowledged. I really don't like your brother. I don't, I don't like Amanda. I don't. I don't okay, it wasn't fair for you to bring them up. Like, oh, they talked to Jean and I'm fine with it. I'm like, come on, that's not the same. Did she just say it wasn't fair for you to bring them up? Yep. Wow. I can't that's believe my the... Wi-Fi is still on. <laughs> not today, Satan. Okay. <laughs> Same. I don't really care for them. I wouldn't. You care. and I are so close. I yeah, know. I don't care if I ever talk to Dan again. I I don't. It's very right. different between me and Dan and me and you. Of course it is, and it always yeah, has. Yeah, and so if I suddenly befriended Dean, there's no. I disagree with you. I believe there's no way you wouldn't feel betrayed. I don't know that I would, Kathy. He's at flag all the time. You're at flag all the time. That doesn't surprise me. I I've never seen Gene. Don't I, I saw him one time in passing, like two years ago. They're not even a calm cycle. Of course. No. Okay. I am not a friend of Jean's. Do not know Jean would not become Jean's friend because I'm telling you I'm intense this way. Okay. Can I jump in with my own question and then we'll carry on? Of course. <clears throat> she claims to have had no prior knowledge of this horrible incident. One of many, but the one that in particular that you guys discussed. And yet she also seems to acknowledge that you and Dan are not friends. What is her explanation for how she knows you and Dan don't like each other if she claims not to know about the horrible things that happen. That and her and her brother are incredibly close. That whole family is extremely close. She knows. You can tell in parts of this whole recorded part one, two, three, and four call that she knows. Right. And my other question there is, Gene Wally, your father, is a huge donor and an important person in the world of Scientology in Kansas City. Other than her kissing your ass and trying to be like, I'm Team Reese. What's her explanation for why she doesn't like uh, Gene Wally? Has she, I mean, she doesn't give one in these phone calls, but that's the question that's going through my mind is Gene Wally is a Scientology VIP in the Kansas City area. She's acting like she does not like Gene Wally. Exactly. Do, did, she, did she ever give you a... Yeah, why? Um, because again, like I said yesterday, everybody, how many staff were there at the time that this whole this whole assault went down with Dan? When I was 16, I would say 15 staff members in a tiny building. This was two org buildings ago. She knew that whole story of him coming and flipping out and leaving and what a flap, what a problem it created me going to the hospital, having surgery and then blowing staff. She acts like she doesn't know any of this. And then the whole blow up that created with the Kansas city org, mm -hmm. my dad never really came back to that org much for at least 20 years. He wasn't really a public there anymore. That created a huge problem. So he was off lines or he was just a flag public? Uh, he just became a flag and then Nashville. Interesting. Yeah. So it, it is interesting, though, that in order to get on your good graces, she's shitting on someone who, at least, who Scientology at least considers a big donor and a VIP. Just That's what, that's what Scientology is. It's throwing people under the bus only behind their back. It's, it's constant um, talking shit about people and writing reports on people behind their back, but to their face, if she looked at Gene Wally in the face, she would be kiss assy and all those things because he's a wealthy public. Right. That's right. all Scientology is. Right. Well, I also think that you know a lot of things that happened between him and my mom and how he treated her. And I think that also goes back for you that you've always said I'm team Diane. Like it goes before me. You know yeah. some dirty things that he's done. I just think he... I actually, I was probably too young to know, to be honest. Like, I was a 16, 17-year-old supervisor when your mom when that, your mom went through that. Okay. She didn't tell me. So she acknowledges that she herself was a minor while being a staff member at the Kansas City Org. I thought that was interesting. And not going to high school. Why would you give that analogy? You were a supervisor at the Org. You don't right. know what that shit was like. None of us do. Right. But I mean, I could see that your mom was for me i could see at that time that your mom was a beautiful sweet sort of soft-spoken person yeah i don't know if you know her that way but that's how i knew her to be oh i definitely feel that way about my mom i i just think i that you're aware that my dad has done some evil fucking tricks and that's not I believe it accounted but I'm for not, i'm not personally to be honest i'm not personally aware of anything that didn't come from you or jeff kittinger 
and um, Jeff Kittinger obviously had a was a dog with a bone with that. And but you know, I'm your friend. I'm not doubting everything you've ever told me. Yeah, I know I'm that. not. But I it just, comes from you. I don't. Ex I don't expect you to help. I appreciate you going to do what you're going to do. Do it to clean it up on your end if you need to. But I don't. I also don't feel like I've done anything wrong. I don't see. I'm not asking you to be penitent about getting yourself heard and your feelings understood and do anything you can about it. I'm not. Okay. I appreciate that. Other people will think that I've done something wrong. I'm sure Brenda is in some room right now. You know. I'm actually going to try to get a hold of Brenda. If she's not sleeping, I'm going to try to get a hold of MA. When should I get back to you? Um, this is not urgent particularly or something. This is me. I'm going to, so I'm going to breakfast with this girl. I don't think she has that much time. And then I got to go pick up the dog. He's at the groomers. And then I'm home all afternoon after that. As far as I know, I start okay. dinner around five and then tomorrow and, and Thursday I work all day. Oh, what are you doing? I'm in Brookside working for a store that a friend owns. She just merged. She has three stores and she merged two together and needed help. And so I'm in like a big store on that main Brookside strip. It's really fun. Is it a, re a retail store? Yeah. I've never done this before. I've never worked retail, but I'm enjoying it. And it's just some extra money, but I'm honestly spending everything I make in the store. So it's not fucking doing anything for me. But, um, <laughs> I bet Jeff thinks that's funny. He thought it was funny probably, but now he's like, this is not funny anymore. <laughs> All, like I come home every time with like a bag full of shit that I bought. So um, but I'm enjoying it just for the social. I needed to get out of the house. I was starting to feel really like stirred up and I need to get out of here. So that part's really nice. Okay. Well, just text me when you feel like talking before dinner, you know. If you find something out today, will you text me and then we'll make time to talk? Yeah, totally. I wonder what they'll say. You're being awfully nice about it. I feel like the flag MA is going to be like, get this person fucking declared. No, it's not going to happen, Reese. I love you. Okay, love you too. Bye. <laughs> Bye. So. Okay, so that's where one phone call with her ends, and then she calls you back, and that's where the recording picks up, right? And this is the same day. I looked in my recordings. This is also January 9th. It was just in the afternoon. Okay. How could you been here? It's two different buildings. There's a flag building, and then there's an advanced fork where you do your OT stuff. Uh-huh. And there's probably, I don't know how many MAAs. I've probably seen 50. There could be 150. Okay? okay? I just don't have any idea. Anyway, my MAA doesn't know anything about it, but is able to look at a database if someone's been declared or you're not, you know, like a disconnect should have occurred due to a declare, their name is in there. Your name is not on there. She just acknowledged if disconnection occurred due to an SP declare, even yeah, yeah, though she, she spent a good portion of the call denying Enforce disconnections. Yes, I'm, that's true. I'm going to rewind that. Hold on. Well, no. To look at a, anyway, my MAA doesn't know anything about it, but is able to look at a database if someone's been declared or you're not, you know, like a disconnect should have occurred due to a declare, their name is in there. Your name is not on there. Well, no, or, of course it's not yet. It will, but yeah. Yeah, but that also means that you know, Brenda, Doug, Fiona, Sam, anybody is free to talk to you. Like, it's not like there's some known situation about Marisa that means nobody should be talking to you. And I just want to jump in. The reason Kathy's having to explain this or trying to explain this is because all of Reese's family who were either in Clearwater or visiting Clearwater cut all contact with her, re stopped returning all text messages, all phone calls, all voicemails, and... And so I guess if Kathy's to be believed, which she isn't, she's saying they, they didn't have to disconnect from you. The implication being, well, they just did it because they wanted to, because you're not mm -hmm. officially declared yet, but they still disconnected from you anyway. I just, I don't know yeah. if everyone listening right now would truly and, get that. And also, I don't know how many people are in here new that didn't hear this. She keeps referring to me as Marisa. I just wanted to clear that up. That's my legal name. I go by Reese because when I was two, everybody called me Marissa and my dad switched it to Reese just, just to clear that up. So people aren't like, who is this person? Yeah. Right. This is too like, yeah, I get it. Not yet. It's a week old. Well, you said, you know, for all you know, Brenda's like locked in a room and can't talk to you since six weeks ago. I'm letting you know, no, that's definitely not the case. 
because it's in progress? No, there's nothing. There's nothing there. Now, does that mean that Brenda wrote a report or didn't write a report that somewhere, some, you know, has, you wanted to know, has someone seen that video? None of that data is available to me right now. But my MAA said she would look into it the next couple of days and get back to me. She hmm. did have about uh, seven people waiting to see her on their routing forms. So I doubt she's going to be like, you know, go try to figure it all out today. And I just didn't want to leave you going. Let's help Kathy here. Okay. Well, that's okay. Um, I just have a feeling my talking to Aaron Smith Levin isn't going to be like a no big deal. Like something's going to come of it. I'm sure. I'm just waiting to hear. Well, and I wrote that down and I'm going to bring it over, um, drop it off, say what you told to me regarding the situation, how you feel, see what I could do. But it would be nice if I came up with like, hey, here's what Reese is really looking for out of this or, you know, here are some ideas of what can improve things. I'm sorry, I have to say, she sounds just like a hostage negotiator where she's kind of like, you know, I I'm going to go and tell them your demands. It'd be nice if you released a hostage as a show of good faith. What, what could, what, do, help, help me help you. It does sound like that, doesn't it? Uh, okay. Which I probably should spend some time talking to you about in order that you and I could come up with something, but I think I'm just thinking it over. Do you want to talk some more? I mean, sure. It's, it's okay. I don't have a lot to think about it. I don't have anything to think over. I've been thinking this over for a long time. Yeah, like decades. <laughs> yeah, I don't have anything else. Like, I don't, I don't have a plan. I don't need to. I don't know. I just assume at this, at some point. I, I mean, I've been thinking a declare is coming for months now. I told you that. I told Brenda. I was like, maybe we should just disconnect now because it's coming. I told yeah, her that. Yeah, but a, I don't think that's coming. Just because, like right now, that's coming your way. I don't get that at all. I think that would already be on the line. Now, based on a video from a week ago with Aaron Smith, I mean, I put that communication out. So I'll, I'll see what I get in regards to that. But it'll be within my right to do something to help improve the situation long before anybody will issue a declare. I have absolutely the right by our own policy. I don't need anyone to tell me this or confirm this. That if there is something I can do that... Um, prevents an attack, bad feelings from you, you feeling like you have to fight against Scientology, you know, it's one thing for you to not do Scientology, it's another thing for you to feel like you hate it. So if there's anything I can do to help, and I don't mean shut you up, I mean truly help, then I want to do it. Okay. I appreciate that. I just don't think there's anything you can do. There's nothing that I think we can do. I don't need to formulate a plan. I... I don't think there's anything to, I just, I don't know what the solution is. Is there a solution here? I mean, I believe amends are possible. And the difference between criminals and not criminals is that they feel remorse, right? That a person feels remorse and that they would do something to make things better. But wouldn't they have already done and it? There's an ambulance like going by me and I legally have to pull over and get out of this way and I can't pull it. She's driving this whole time. She's talking to you. She's driving. I'm sorry. That cracks me up. <laughs> Were you going to say something? I was you... just thinking about what she said, the difference between criminals and not criminals, and then saying they, they want to make it better. I was thinking about Dan when she said that, and that's why I said, but wouldn't they have already done something about it? <laughs> right. So she's admitting that Dan's a criminal. Scientology's criminal, you know? <laughs> yeah. Okay, we're good. What, but it's okay. Wouldn't they have already done it? This stuff happened decades ago. Like, you know, what are we trying to fix? Do it, one thing, for example, is that sometimes people do it in their own way. For example, one time I did something to a public person I do not feel good about. I don't want to say what it is, okay? That's okay. Sorry, I'm feeding the dog. You repair something with that public person. Sorry. Uh-huh. There wasn't anything for me to do about it. Can you pause it, Aaron? Yeah. I was feeding the dog here, and it just reminded me of a comment someone said the other day that was like, I love how casually Reese is like microwaving things and cleaning and like going about her business. Like she just doesn't give a shit about this conversation. That's obvious right there. I'm just like scooping food in. 
I, I was checked out at this point. That's why I said earlier, we go in circles. I'm just, as you can tell, I'm like, what? And I love how you said, how she said people do, th- what did she say? People do things in their they own. Make, sometimes they make up the damage in their own way. Is that, you mean how denying it and calling me that woman that is that their own way that it didn't actually happen. And Aaron, if you'd known me as a friend better, you'd know that she was hallucinating. <laughs> oh, that way. Okay. Okay. I'm clear on it now. Thank you. <laughs> Oh my God. And um, I know I've seen some people asking in the chat whether um, Osa would have been in the room with her when she's having this conversation or listening in. And I think the answer is no. One, she's literally driving. I don't think she's driving with someone from Osa in her car. And Kathy's speaking way too freely um, to be uh, for her to be being directly monitored on this phone call. Um, in my opinion, do you agree with that? Yeah. Do you think she recorded it though for Osa? Well, what's interesting, what's interesting is that if she did record it, it's illegal because she's in a two party consent state and you're in a one party consent state. So you're allowed to record it. She's not. So I don't know if she recorded it or not. It would be hard to record a call like that while you're driving. Um, It doesn't mean she didn't do it. But if I were Osa, I would not be wanting to take Kathy's word for how this conversation went. I would want to hear a recording. So So You know, it's possible she did have some way of recording it. I just don't know. But like you said, she speaks pretty freely. I think if she was recording, she would have been a little more ethical in what she was saying. Yes, I agree with you. If she had someone monitoring that call, I don't think she'd be saying everything she's saying. Okay. In the world today, right? Okay. Um, so I had to do things in the general direction that I think make it better. And I maintained communication there, made sure that person was doing okay, blah, blah, blah. So if like I was a bad soup and I, you know, tried to correct what I did, is I'm just picking something, right? If I let a student be sleepy on course and I tried to correct him once and he bit my head off and I tried to like find his misunderstandings another time and he bit my head off again. And this goes on and on, right? For a while. So I know he's not really a product of his course by our study tech. Right. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. All I can really do there, uh, I mean, I didn't go to him and go, hey, I was a bad soup. (laughs) I didn't do that. But I did my best to reach out to that person when I realized how bad it is what I did and what that effect would be, which took me a long time to realize. Because up until then, I was just afraid of this guy biting my head off. (laughs) Sure. And, um, you know, eventually I came to see that as pretty serious on my own. Just like, oh. You know, I never made sure he was winning or that he got it. And now he's not really moving, whatever. So then I just took responsibility for that, reached out to the person, got him back in, made sure that they were winning. And I went the extra mile to do that. When it was no longer my job, I wasn't at the org anymore. I wasn't the person's FSM. Right. But that's something, that's you, right? Like we both know Gene Wally's never going to do that. It's been 38 years. I've been alive. He's not going to do that. I don't want him to do that. But that would right. never happen. So that's, that's the part I want you to consider. When I say think about, Reese, if you think that Gene should go back and take responsibility for his ridiculous implementation of disconnecting from his own child, if that's what he did, and that's how you feel about it, I'm saying maybe it could be acknowledged slash something done. But what you don't want to do is when somebody commits an over, like, like, let's say Huxley knocks over your great grandma from Italy's favorite vase that her Not fiance again. gave her in. What's with the damn vase stories? I don't get the vase story at all. But Maybe I like you got to pay attention to what life. she said here when she says this is what you don't want to do. We need to hear what she's guiding us on here. All right, I'll rewind a little bit. Like each from Italy's favorite. He commits an over. Like like flash something done. But what you don't want to do is when somebody commits an over. Like. Like, let's say Huxley knocks over your great grandma from Italy's favorite base that her fiance gave her in like 1898 Mm -hmm. and it's built with gold by hand. There's no repairing that. What you don't want to do to somebody is say, hey, there's no way in. There's no way this can be made right. Even though there really is no way he can make that right. There's nothing he can do about that base. But what, what are we trying to make right? I don't need anything made right. I've just made it clear where I stand. I made it clear with that chaplain and Brenda. I'm not trying to fix anything. I don't need to fix anything. Well, see, and if 
if you were like, hey, I don't need to fix anything. You guys do you. I'm going to go over here and do me. You be you. I'll be me. And we can all still communicate to each other and be friends. And um, I'm not going to attack you or do things to attack you. And I don't want you to do things to attack me. That'd be great. But that isn't what's happening. Well, I'm not attacking you, though. Not me. No, we're not really talking about me. I hope. I think you would tell me, right? No, you know, I don't have anything. Me, to... right? No. Okay. And Brenda asked so. me that question. Brenda said, do you have an upset with me? And I said, of course I do. I have all kinds of upsets with you. And she was like, what are they? And I laid them out for her. I'm not hiding anything here. I just, I hate Scientology. I I'm going to continue to hate Scientology. And I think it's wrong. I think there's a lot of things that are swept under the rug. I think that the things I'm saying are true. They happen to me. So what's wrong with talking about it? I'm not upset with you for talking about it. Oh, all. you shouldn't be. I'm not upset with me for talking about it. Like, because I didn't talk about it to a Scientologist, I did. I told Brenda and I told the chaplain. I told a couple other Sea Org members that called, but I can't remember their names. Like, but what's wrong with me talking about it? I'm not trying to shut you up, Marie. So I'm trying to do something about the thing you're talking about because I'm under the impression that when someone is upset about something, they would like to have it addressed. Correct. And you're right. But I've been complaining and yapping and nattering or whatever you want to call it for 20 years now about it. And people go, well, you should report that. Or, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Here. So why now? I mean, I've been saying the same things over and over. Nobody... No one cared until I guess now that I said something to Aaron Smith Levin, <laughs> you know, it's I mean, like, I understand, I understand why it feels that way to you, but I don't feel like that's not really true for me. Like over the years, as I talked to you, I didn't feel like you hated Scientology, not one time. Did you not want to do Scientology? Did you associate Scientology with Gene, who you do hate? Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. I feel a little bit, um, stupid for not really noticing that you hated Scientology. Like I, I didn't get that. No, I don't I don't feel that you expressed this to me and I should have done something about that. That's not how I ever felt so right now. So honestly I'm watching the fucking video. Like wow. What did the clip even say that you screenshot? I don't even remember. Like what did he, I didn't get to see Just it. Just the exact schedule, the training schedule. Oh the tech okay. Yeah I know what you're talking about. Okay. I mean, I didn't watch much. As soon as I mean, as soon as I realized, oh, I was out. You know, that's all I know. But um, yeah, it's just weird because Aaron called me, and he was like, nobody saw it because if they saw it, they would have had to record the live, go back and pause it, and then get your information. He was like, there's no way that anybody's gonna be able to just like see that. It's like less than a half a second. I mean, it takes me a second to screen out what's he doing. I'm a suspicious sort. You would have, too. Well, yeah, I, I told him that. I'm not even going to argue about that. Yeah, I told him that. I was like, Scientologists are total sleuths, man. Like, of <laughs> course they saw it. I mean, I'm that way anyway. I'll be, like, watching a movie, and I'll be like, wait a minute. Look at that guy dating so-and-so. And yeah. I'll be. Yeah, I'm the same way. And he was like, no one's going to see it because you'd have to record the live because I've since edited the live. And he was like, you'd also have to know I was going live. Someone would have had to be sitting there and like know it. And I was like, yeah, right. yeah, yeah. You think Scientologists aren't doing that? You're putting out yeah. all this news they don't want you to talk about. Of course, they're going to be all over that. I mean, actually, he just kind of, you know, whatever. I don't know how, like what he had on it that it wouldn't even end to my YouTube feed. Maybe he said Scientology on the top or something. I didn't, I didn't go back and look and go, how did I end up with this? And if it hadn't been his face, absolutely it wouldn't have had any interest. It was just a complete fluke. And the fact that I then knew, <laughs> that is so fluky. Oh, yeah. I mean, I'm not surprised, though. Like, I told him. I was like, people will know. And that's, a, I mean, that's not a problem for You're me. You're not either. hiding it. You're not caring about that. That isn't even the point of any of this. The point of this is me saying, hey, Marisa, you being mad about something and not liking it and having expressed it to me is one thing. You going to somebody whose whole goal is to, you know, fight my, the things I care about, obliterate, you know, that's at that point, you're being friends with somebody who's being mean to me. And I don't like that. And I would like to do something about it. But I for sure never meant to sweep anything under the rug with regard to you and that you feel like you were not taken care of by me or anybody around me is not okay with me and i would like to do something about it and that isn't declare marisa disconnect from marisa that is not what i want 
Right, no, I get it. But the thing that you, the part where you said you're directly in contact with something that's like against me, I feel like that is also against me though. Scientology has done nothing, like I said, it's been harmful to me, if anything. So well, I'm not supportive is, of it. Can I do something regarding any of those harms? And if there's anything that I can do, and I understand it's not up to you to figure out how do people repair something. Like to some degree, the guy has to figure it out, right? The guy doing something wrong. You've said what you have to say. Yeah. So it may be that I'll just have to listen to down and talk to you, list out the things that are upset that you feel have to do with Scientology not being what it should be in regards to those things, like correcting something with your dad or whatever, right? Mm Mm-hmm whatever it is. I'm not saying, or whatever, like I'm bored. I'm like, whatever, there's more than one thing. We right. listen out and we sit, sit down and, and I take it to proper terminals, you know, genes MAA, for example. I'm just picking on that one. I'm not saying there's nothing with Brenda. Or there's nothing somewhere else. I'm just picking one. Mm-hmm. And then we, one by one, try to do something about those things. But if that isn't in the direction of where you want to go, then I won't go do that. That's all I'm really saying. I just, what that would help you, not me. I don't want to sit down with any terminals. I don't want to figure something out. No, I don't, I don't think that will help me. I'm not- Reese, I just love how you keep reiterating to her that you are not asking for anything to be handled. You could not care less about how Scientology feels about this. Uh, You're not asking her to do anything for you. And that's why it's so remarkable that she keeps you on the phone for so, so long because her mission is one thing. What can I do to keep Reese talking from talking to Aaron (laughs) Smith-Levin or any other big bad SPs? I mean, that's why I I almost kind of checked out listening. She almost confuses me. Even listening to it now, it's like I keep saying what you just said. It's like, I, I don't want help. I don't want to do anything that you're like, she keeps saying something can be done. What can we do? And I keep pushing back going nothing. This is for you, not me. This is a right. harmful organization. I don't want to have anything to do with it. It's so weird. It's like, what is she asking? Yeah. Is she negotiating with me? I don't even really understand at this point what she's doing. I would have been like, okay, it sounds like nothing can be done. Goodbye. That's right. That like she's negotiating with someone who has no demands. You're not asking I mean, her to true. do a damn thing for you. And she Nothing. won't get off the phone. It's really weird. <laughs> like it's, I can't wait to play the rest of these. We have so many more with other, other Scientologists guys. This yeah. is just the tip. Yeah. <laughs> that interesting. How would that help me besides to help you? I'm just curious how you mean that. Because I don't think you want to disconnect from me. And it's probably you that. Want to for me? I told you earlier, I'm willing to be declared and be disconnected from everyone. Yes willing to be to stand up for what you believe is right in some way is a different thing Reese, than you making the call on that saying hey Huxley you broke my grandma's space I want nothing more to do with you I hate you and it uh, cannot be repaired uh-huh. I'm just picking that example so hopefully you'll see how it feels to me hey Kathy you're a part of something that has you know created this this and this effect nothing can be done to make it better well, not in the organization. What am I going to do to fix it in Scientology? I want nothing to do with Scientology. I see. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not going to like Finally. do conditions. I'm not going to go back and do the conditions by dynamics I'm or a session. I'm talking about you. I'm talking about if I go into my NAA and say, hey, you Wally created this situation. He did this, this, and this, and this. Please pull his files. Please help me get to the bottom of it because it has come to this point. I love she's desperate to keep talking about your dad so that she doesn't have to keep talking about her brother, Dan. That's right. She keeps misdirecting to my father. Yeah. I didn't realize was to this point. I see. I'm not talking about you coming to an MAA or something right now. That's not at all what I'm saying. Okay. I'm I'm not trying to make you into a Scientologist at all. I don't really feel like you're doing that. I'm just saying what can be done about it from my point of view? I know where I stand. If you want to do that, I think that should have been done a long time ago. Um, yeah. You know, flag, the flag people came. What do you call that? The flag world tour came. Uh, I had a session. We wrote up a report together with a guy named Adam. It was like a six page report. And he was like, cause I had a session all about my dad and this upset. And he was like, we need to get a report to the flag MAA. When was this Reese? Years ago. And Brenda was on it too. And uh, we sent this report and he was like, call me if you don't hear anything. I never heard anything. Brenda had me call flag. And I was like, I'm looking for Adam. So-and-so. And And they were like, Oh, he's in Switzerland. 
And I was like, I okay. So like, this is what I mean. Like nothing's, why now? I have complained from the rooftops. Nothing's ever been done. And I don't I expect anything to be done. I thought you didn't want anything done. I thought you were like disconnected from Gene. It was a done thing for you. Not that Gene did that to you, but that you did that to him. And I didn't have any problem with that. I'm not criticizing but I thought it was your choice to step away from the, your father. You see what I mean? It, I didn't. Yeah. I, it's the spotlight. He's the way in. You're telling me today. Yeah. It's the, Oh my God, we love your dad. It's the fact that he just kind of got away with disconnecting from his children and everyone was like, Oh, that's okay. That's no big deal. Jeff Kitten so did that with okay. his kids. Alex doesn't talk to Abby. Like it's just a common thing. If you don't practice Scientology, you're fucking jettisoned. You're a degraded being. That's how I feel. Okay, I understand. So but I don't think no comment. Not that your feelings are wrong, but I don't think that situation is right. And I would like to do something about it. I don't want it to just feel swept under the rug or be unhandled. So I want to sit down with you and just get what the different situations are and see what I can do to try to improve those things. I appreciate that. I Wish that would have been done years ago when I, you know, how many chaplains have I talked to? I talked to Claire before she was moved. She was the Kansas City chaplain. Remember some Sea Org lady? Yeah. Yeah, I know who she is. I mean, I, I've met her. I mean, none of this. Nobody's way. ever. I, I just, I, I've had a lot of sessions on this and a lot of handlings. And Dan's written up doing OWs and conditions by dynamics and PTS handlings and not, none of that's, I mean, I'm over it. I'm, I am done with that part. I'm asking you to do anything about that on that end of things. Okay. I'm asking you to leave a door open for Scientology to correct itself right now in present time, regardless of what has been done or not done in the past. Okay. And that, that, that during that time that I attempt that, you reserve any attacks along the lines of what Aaron Smith Levin does. That's all I'm asking. I'm not asking that you not express yourself, that you don't speak your truth, that you, you know what I mean? It's yeah. a different thing. Yeah. I And you can speak it to me. Only me. And I feel that I But not anyone else. Please God, no one else. Please yeah. not. No, but don't please, just please. just I just ask that you only talk to me. Yeah. I mean earlier in the call there was a, a point where she specifically said, but can you please just not talk to anyone else about this other than me? Yeah, I was like, me. what a weird request. So <laughs> weird. It's so clear how guilty she knows it's a it's guilt. I mean, it's it's you're backed into a corner. It's very clear to me listening to this. Just you know, I get that you're upset. I get that you're upset, but only talk to me about that. Please don't talk to Aaron Smith Love. Why? What are you worried about? Yeah. Oh, it's <sighs> sickening. It's it's just that we're about done. We're wrapping it up here anyway, guys. I'm surprised people have hung on this long. I mean, this is fascinating shit. I mean, people don't get to uh, see Scientologists acting in their true nature out in the wild like this, you know? This is true. And and I, for days now, have thought, should I have done this? I've Guys, I've been a little nervous about releasing these. But as every hour, every day that's gone by, I feel a little bit stronger and a little bit stronger and a little bit more angry, to be honest. I'm kind of, Aaron, I'm coming up the tone scale. <laughs> I was in grief and fear and now we're, we're coming up to anger. So, um, I'm feeling mad and I think absolutely I want to release everything I have as long as they don't cut the Wi-Fi again. We are golden. We're solid. We're going to keep doing this. I hope your weekend's open, Aaron. I hope it's, oh, open. it's wide open. <laughs> good, good. We have more to release guys. Uh, but I have. Yeah. And I'm saying, and I, and I, like I'm receiving the communication. I'm not rejecting it. I'm not finding you bad for saying it to me. Like it's not that I, you don't need me to tell you it's okay to communicate, but it might be nice to know it's okay with me that you tell me this. Yeah, it is okay. Though. I, I know it's okay. Like I say, I've, I've not held right. back well, in any way. I'm acknowledging like you don't need me to say it's okay, but I want you to understand how I feel too. Okay. Yeah. Cause I... it's all about me. It's amazing how she makes it about her. Like, it's just amazing, you know? No, it's totally about her. Like, she's, yeah. this whole thing, if we could play this all as one long video, uh, this is, guys, I don't know if you've all listened to the others. It's all about Kathy and, yeah. and her worrying about, you know, even if you guys notice, she won't, she kind of almost won't acknowledge the Dan thing. She even says that. She goes, I don't want to even acknowledge that it happened. 
She did. She said, I don't even want to acknowledge that other than acknowledging you. Yes. Which, what is that? A no answer? No all acknowledgement acknowledgement? What is that? Yeah. I mean, that's a, How do you a even, I just of, that. I don't not, not understand. <laughs> I don't even want to acknowledge that except, and I'm not going to accept. Ack. Of a, <laughs> Ack. <laughs> that was the weirdest thing going back and yeah. I don't not understand. So let's keep oh going. God. I think you're going to be wrong. I think once once it's trickled down the line that I'm off lines, I haven't been active as a Scientologist a long time. I've been complaining about Scientology openly with Brenda and this chaplain. And I talked to Aaron Smith Levin. They're going to put the hammer down on it and just say, declare her. I mean, I could be wrong, but I just feel like that's probably coming. And I've been prepared for it for a while now. Well, maybe unprepare yourself and think about what could Kathy help you, not because Kathy's a god or special, but because she actually does care and thinks, yeah, let's do something about something that should have been done. You know what I mean? That's it. That's all I'm saying. Okay. I appreciate that. The door. I don't know okay. what, what can be done. You'll have to think on that. Like you said, I don't really have any solutions. I mean, I'll probably have to listen and really detail. It's probably, a, you know, to a great degree, me writing reports on the things that you tell me so that I can try to get stuff done. Like even just one thing earlier is like, who's this Italian guy? I don't know who talked to you, but I couldn't find an Italian guy who'd been on tour or anything in Kansas city. So I'm like, are you sure he was in Kansas city? Uh, he's not on tour. Concert? He's, I think he's part of the group there now, the mission. Brenda knows okay, him. You I could ask Brenda. I can't think of his name. I can't uh, easily talk to Brenda, so um, if you think of his name, let me know. I'll try to talk to Brenda or send her a text or something, I guess. Um, you know, this is one thing you told me today that made me go, who the hell confronts somebody with a report over the phone? Like, I want to correct that. You see what I mean? Yeah, I wondered about that. Is that even legit to be like, I'm sitting here looking at this. He said, I'm looking at your file, and I see this report that your dad called you. A no, it's not to legit see. at all. That's why I was like. You know, there's quite a few things that you told me today that I would like to do something about. Okay. And I'm like, okay, I need to sit down with Marisa. But I, I, I'm just saying, I want to do that with you, between you and me. Okay. As opposed to what? <laughs> like, it's just, it's just more of her trying to make this about, this is about me and you, Reese. I don't want to lose you as a friend. And you don't want to lose me as a friend, whether you know it or not. Like, I think I'm good for you. <laughs> I know. So creepy. Uh, and also, do you notice like she's wanting to follow up on things that don't pertain so much to like, who's this Italian guy? Like she actually wants to go follow up on that guy to correct him and get cramming and, and so that he doesn't do that again. She's not trying to fix anything with me. Yeah. She's who's the Italian guy? To, I know it was, it was an irrelevant part of everything that you had said. He's the one who broke grandma's vase from Italy. <laughs> If I hear the vase one more time. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Brenda knows who if he is because I told her the whole situation and how upset I was. And she was like, I love that guy. I was like, I don't. So. Oh, gosh. oh, no. Yeah. Okay. Well, right now I need to go to get Lily. Lily has cheer from five to seven and I have to bring her a salad. That's okay. I'll just... And um, so right now I'm going to deliver my little write-up it's not a kr it's just a little write-up to my maa telling her what you told me about Aaron Smith Levin with my screenshot and then you know my calm that i had the screenshot and then just wait for a couple days to hear anything on that oh what happened not today am satan I, am i still here hold on hold on what's going on oh my holy, god i'm, I'm holy shit what is that Wow. Somebody's messing with something. We are we are shaking their tree. Wow. Hold on. It's Let's real. see. I mean, I have like five stuff. Oh, In the okay. meantime, you're working the next two days anyways. But if you want, if you have time to talk about it, let me know. And we'll just start detailing the stuff. And I'll see, you know, I'll pick the ones I feel like I could do something about and start doing stuff. Okay. I appreciate this, Kathy. I just... There is no reason in the world for this thing to be buffering right now. <clears throat> oh, well. They're getting us. So I want to <sighs> say something because it was pretty much over. But did you guys notice that she said, oh, no, if I block her on Facebook, does that mean I can't find our 
messenger conversation? No, your messenger conversation will still be there. How your messenger conversation will still be there. Um, uh, hold on. I'm just going to pause this. Um, yeah, I have like 500 megabyte upload download. And there's no reason in the world for this thing to be buffering. Yeah. Let me see. 41, 46. I'm actually going to open this back up again in a new I browser window. I can't believe I'm still here. Um, okay. So are you saying you're looking for your private, your, your Facebook messenger? Yeah. And if they're gone them? because I blocked her, I can't find anything. So if you, if you deleted them, obviously they won't be there, but. Oh, no, no, no. I didn't delete them, but mm. I blocked her. And so I can't find. Okay. So I'm going to go down to, uh, here it is. Um, I, the reason this is important to me, I want to, I want to kind of go back and, and see what this says. So January 9th, she texted me and said she was on study this morning. So I haven't spoken to her just yet. Just letting you know. So you aren't kind of waiting to hear. She's talking about Brenda. Um, and then I said, Sergio, I feel like the Italian guy's name was Sergio. And she said, thanks. I'll check. And then what? There's nothing for her to check. She's going to check the name of a guy who might have been in the org 10 years ago. Well, I, anyway, yeah. I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. It's okay. I just, this kind of pertains to it. And I feel like this adds to the story. Saturday, January 14th. This was January 9th that she called. I said, Hey gal, I've never heard back from you. Wondering what you found out. She never got back with me ever again. I said, Doug has Huxley, and I'm wondering if I should talk to him about all of this. There's a lot of silence, which doesn't surprise me. Do people tell you they're going to disconnect, or should I just ask? She <laughs> said, hi. No, nothing at all about disconnecting. I wrote my MAA letter, and I dropped it off after we last talked. I have not talked to anyone else about our conversations. Just waiting to hear what can be done with the stuff we talked about. Um, so that was what day? January 14th. So this is, I want to read this because this is what I sent to her again. Never heard from her again. Thursday, February 23rd, guys. So over a month later, okay, this is me. I never heard anything back from you. I just sent you a message via messenger. Here it is in case you don't see it. So I was trying to reach out to her because she wouldn't answer me. And I said, hey, Kathy, I'm sure it's intentional, but I have noticed that everyone is disconnected from me, but remained Facebook friends. You never reached back out to me. Is there any way to at least tell me if I have been declared? It seems that way. Like I said, everyone except Doug has stopped all communication, pretending I don't exist. I figured it was coming, but not sure why still connected on social media. I can only assume it's a quiet declare not to cause any chaos or disruptions while Brenda is still on her training. I'm guessing that is why Doug has no idea what's going on. Are you allowed to let me know? or direct me to where I can find out that never got an answer. No response. So she went from acting like, I love you, Reese. I love you. This is about us. Uh, I would never want to lose you. I, I want to get these things fixed. I have a right to get these things fixed. I have the ability to get these things fixed too. Bye. bye Nothing. Never got an answer. So isn't that interesting? That whole fucking phone call, especially toward the end was her scrambling to get to her MAA so we can figure this out and we're going to sit down and write reports and crickets. I never heard from her again. Unbelievable. It's almost like her whole job was just to get as much information from you as possible and let the MAAs know just how bad the damage was going to be. It, it totally, I mean, it's obvious mm -hmm. that she, actually Kathy's the double agent yeah. more than me. Exactly. All right. It's no longer buffering. Let's do this. In the meantime, you're working the next two days anyways. But if you want, if you have time to talk about it, let me know. And we'll just start detailing the stuff. And I'll see, you know, I'll pick the ones I feel like I could do something about and start doing stuff. Okay. I appreciate this, Kathy. I just, I don't know the angle. Like, why? So that I don't get declared? Marisa, I had no idea this is how you felt about it. And it's not that I don't understand that there were upsets and things wrong, but I did not understand it wasn't more kind of on your own determinism of like, I don't want anything to do with Gene, as an example. Okay. And actually as the biggest example. Okay. I had no idea. I had no idea. I've never heard from you before. Gene deserted me. And that's what I heard today. <laughs> 
Okay. And you didn't know that story? No, I did not know that story. Okay. Promise you. Okay. Um, well, there's probably just a lot I haven't shared with you, but I promise. Which actually says a lot because you and I share a lot. So yeah, when you say talk I'm not that often. quiet anymore, I get that. I'm sorry. We don't talk. I talk to you like twice a year. I mean, I don't, I shared it with Brenda because Brenda's constantly wanting to call me. She calls me pretty often. Mm. And so. And you and I have mostly talked about life outside of Scientology. Yeah. You know, like and since you moved to Clearwater, down. we talk a lot less. Yeah. And yeah. I mean, I definitely knew there was a great deal of upset regarding King Wally. Like, I know you don't like him and, you know, I knew that, but. I, I kind of likened it more to my own different family situations, which mm -hmm. have been, you know, the way I manage my relationships a little bit more by my choice. I don't have any disconnections completely that way. And my dad has passed away, but you know, I, I just didn't see it the way you're giving it to me today. That's all. And I feel bad about that. Okay. Well, I don't want you to feel bad about it. It's not, it's not uh, your responsibility by, by far. It's not. And Brenda knew. I mean, if you saw a puppy in the road wounded, it's not your puppy. Would you do something about it? Of course I would. I'm the metaphor girl. I mean, but you know I would because I care about animals way more than people. <laughs> and that's my point. I care about you. So I don't want to make it sound like a burden kind of responsibility. Well, I don't. It doesn't feel that way to me. Okay. I feel like, oh, shit, my friend is hurt enough to have taken this action. What? What? You know? Yeah. That's it. I won't, I won't keep you because I gotta bring the salad to yeah, my Yeah, it's okay. Okay. <laughs> well, we'll talk again okay. then. Okay, but probably not in the next couple of days, right? Because you're working. Yes. I mean, you could text me and I can tell you what hours I'm working, but I don't work on Wednesday. I work Tuesday and Thursday. Okay, well, if I get anything that makes me feel like, oh, we should talk right away or something, I'll do that. But otherwise, I won't bother you. If you feel free and want to talk, let me know. I am here for you. Thank oh. you. Okay. I do love you. Love you too. Bye. Bye. Oh my <laughs> god. The end? I was oh like my. I was like out of oxygen. I was like, bye. I was yeah. like, I can't do this anymore. I'm here for you. I love you. I re what'd she say? I really am here for you. I really I am here for you. Never heard from her again. And she notice how she tried to follow up, like, so you're working the next two days. So if I get something, I'm gonna text you. Never heard from her again. That shows the agenda. That shows yeah. that she was doing something for Osa, guys. Yeah. And it's not like, it's not like I released another video mentioning you or you came on my channel and there was a reason for her to sever ties. She went from, I'm here for you. I love you to never contacting you again. I didn't do a video with you until uh, March. Yeah. It was March. So we didn't do anything. It's not like I went on this path with Aaron right immediately. I didn't even plan to have a channel. So all of this like didn't happen right away. It was March that we did something again. Yeah. And I never heard from her after that. That was February 24th that I read that text to you. Yeah. Amazing. I mean, it, it is just so transparent that all it was was an, an operation, a task. She was required by OSA to call you, suck up to you as hard as possible, milk you for as much information as possible. How bad was the damage going to be? Are there any other SPs that, you've in, that you're in touch with? Uh, what's, uh, have you given any information to Aaron that could be legally actionable? And then poof, gone. gone. And notice she told a story, right, a couple of minutes ago where she was like, there was a guy that I wrote a report on. She goes, I don't want to say who because... So you can interrogate the hell out of me, but we're going to keep you <laughs> like yeah. she pulled the string on everything she could possibly get out of me, which was fine. I was totally upfront about all of it. I had no problem telling her because I kept saying, I don't give a shit. None yes. of this matters. I don't have to follow your rules anymore. Yeah. Um, and, you know, we're in touch with people who are close to Kathy in her personal life. And by all reports, Kathy has been in an unusual amount of distress the last couple of weeks, very emotionally upset the last couple of weeks. We're still not sure exactly what it's about. Has Dan O'Connor been removed from his post? Is he at flag for ethics and correction right now? I don't know. I did find a photograph of, of Amanda, uh, of Dan and his wife, Amanda, in the Starlight Cabaret on the free winds, which means they did go to the ship and do OTA, which I think you mm -hmm. already told me. I did. Um, but you know, 
uh, class six OT eight. Could he have been removed from his post for the stuff that have been, that's been exposed about him? Did he Is, break grandma's base? Did he and it's break? just not repairable. <laughs> you just can't fix the vase. Some things can't be fixed, Dan. Yeah. And you can, you can write an email to Aaron and say that, uh, I lied and hallucinated, but I would say that the things that we're talking about, and I, I talk about that story with Brenda too. And I also talk about it with the, uh, the Sea Org chaplain that we will be releasing as well. So I think we can tell that that wasn't a hallucination, that it was real. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so, so um, yeah, stay tuned, guys. We're going to be playing the next recording tomorrow. And if you're not yet subscribed, if you're watching on my channel right now and you're not subscribed to Reese's channel, uh, the link to her channel is in the description down below. You can just find her at Relatable Reese, but um, you definitely yeah. got to subscribe to Reese. Um, yeah, let's let's do more. We got to hurry up and do these before something. I keep hoping I don't get sopranoed. Just remember, guys, I don't really leave the house except for enchiladas. So if I just disappear, something's not right. Okay, <laughs> just come there's looking a, for me. Get a group a couple, together. A couple of questions I didn't put up because they required uh, responses. Dave Owen says, could you explain the implications these conversations will have on those being recorded? You say they're going to be in trouble, but how so? So, you know, in Scientology, they have their, they called, they're called ethics gradients, ethics and justice gradients. Um, there's a whole policy letter giving all the different ethics gradients. I've never done a video on those, but you know, even in these recorded conversations, you've heard Kathy make reference to things called lower conditions. And I'm not going to do a whole description about them. But if you guys want to do some sort of a Google deep dive on Scientology's lower ethics conditions, that is what it means to get in trouble in Scientology. You get assigned a lower ethics condition and you got to do certain things to come work your way back up through the ethics conditions that can require a, an infinite variety of things. Uh, but what it means is you're in trouble. <laughs> you're just in mm -hmm. trouble. Uh, you can be ordered to sex checking, the interrogation style auditing at your own expense. It's very expensive to get sex checking, especially at Flag, where Kathy, where Kathy lives. And Kathy's an OT7. So sex checking for her is extra expensive. Um, uh, go ahead. I just have a question, Aaron. You know more than me about this. What will the implications be for Kathy? Like, will she get in trouble for this? She will be taken off of OT7 for this, in my opinion. Like, will she be like commed, which is like a steep ethics gradient or a court of ethics or something? In my opinion, how could she, she be? be? They asked her to make this phone call. If they had her do this investigating, wouldn't she be kind of clean from doing? I mean, the fact that she let herself be recorded by someone who already told her on the phone that she had recorded other Scientologists is true. insane to me. That's true. Okay. <laughs> The I, fact um, that she acknowledged on, uh, you know, essentially acknowledged that Scientology has over. She said that several times in the call. That's true. You know, Didn't she say something when I said Scientology has been destructive and she said, like, I don't disagree. I don't not understand. <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah, it was so confusing. It's hard to know. And I almost never want to listen to that again. It was making me feel confused. But um, you're right. I I wonder though, like what will the ethics, what will she specifically, we won't know. We don't know, but I'm just wondering. It's going to be one of those things, just like the analogy that she was making to you of sometimes you have to make up the damage, but how do you make up the damage if the damage can't be undone? Yeah. That's a question you're going to have to now answer for yourself, Kathy, the, the damage that, that you did by letting yourself be recorded, admitting to all these things cannot be undone. So you're going to have to tell the ethics officer what you should do to make up the damage. Cause you can't unring this bell. This face is already broken. How are you going to glue this back together? <laughs> what about the puppy thing at the end? It's like, you're right. The love hate buttons. I love animals. So she kept doing this. If you see a puppy wounded in the street, this is just, it's, I expect so much more out of a Supreme OT seven guys. We are taught that OTs are like, super brilliant and can move things with their mind. This woman sounded like an idiot. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm all flustered. I think I do need some enchiladas. <laughs> Fox glove. I guess it's kind of the same question. What trouble, if any, would she likely get in for failing to stop you uh, from talking to a, a run? 
You know, I, I got to be honest. I don't think Osa would hold Kathy responsible for you continuing to talk to me because she was just sent in as an intelligence mission to get as much information as possible. Like not. Uh, I mean, I don't I don't think even Osa thought that Kathy could get you to stop talking to me. But I think she was like, you know, while I'm in here doing my job, let me just see if there's any chance of salvaging this thing. Mm -hmm. You know? Yeah. Agreed. Um, question. Will Kathy be in lower conditions now after 20 years of being a good girl? Oh my. And that's the thing. Kathy's not a good girl. <laughs> I mean, Kathy's done a lot of damage to people guys. <laughs> yeah. It's amazing that she's like, I haven't done lower conditions in 20 years. Bullshit. And it's as you can see, Kathy is all about Kathy. She's interested yeah. in saving herself. Um, do you think she'll be in lower? Do OT, I guess OTs get lower conditions. Yeah, they get lower conditions more often than other people because they have to go in for their six month checks. Every time you go in for a six month check, you're doing some lower condition on something. What? I mean, uh, I mean, honestly, because every little over, every little over, I mean, um, I mean, I guess if you go in and you literally FN all your sec check questions and you've gotten off like no major overts, I guess it's possible to do a six month check without doing a lower condition. But honestly, it's almost impossible. Oh, my God. I didn't know that because you're constantly throughout those six months sending in your stuff to the flag CS, right? For them to look at everything. Your auditor's worksheets, but, you, you know, you're not sending in like a weekly OW write up or anything like that. I guess no. I didn't really know what, what entailed in those six month checks. I just know people would go and be gone for like a week or two. Yeah. I mean, the six month check is sec checking ethics handlings and any technical correction based on, but even the technical correction is usually based on, um, if, if you, uh, get off and over it of, you know, you think you miscalled your own FN or some shit like that, which would be insane. I mean, it's insane. The, idea, the solo auditing stuff gets pretty wacky. Not um, to mention it costs a ton of money to go do that. Doesn't it? Because you're paying yeah. the flag CS like by the hour to do. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Exactly. Annette Janot. I think Brenda's going to get in trouble also because Reese told her a lot. Aaron, we share the same birthday. How do you know when my birthday is, Annette? <laughs> I don't even know your birthday. <laughs> um, so let's see. Brenda's already in a shit ton of trouble. From the best that we can tell, they she's been kicked off of staff. Mm -hmm. We mm -hmm. we genuinely believe Brenda's been kicked off of staff, and she was in training at Flag to be the executive director of Kansas City Foundation. Foundation or day? Foundation. And for the use watching, Foundation is the night and weekends shift, and day is the um, Monday through Friday nine to six shift. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, she was going to be the executive director of the org. She was kicked out of flag, sent back home, and it looks like she's also been kicked off of staff. And honestly, wouldn't shock me if Dan got kicked off of staff as well. She was already the deputy executive director, the DED, and she was going to continue that, but the ED died at the, right. and the during the training program. So yeah, she was she was a big deal, Brenda. Um, I wonder, is it going to get worse for me? Like, so? I don't know. I, um, you know, Doug and Brenda's son is Huxley's father. Mm -hmm. Jeff and I are wondering if like, I guess not worse for me, but what I'm trying to say is, um, they have not mentioned any of this to the son, Michael. He doesn't, he's no one said a word to him about any of this, except me. I'm the only one that's talked to him about it. Do you think there's going to, we're going to get to a point where they're going to have to, it's weird. I feel like I could make an argument for answering your question in both the positive and the negative, the affirmative and the negative. Um, and so I, I don't want to just blabber for no reason. I feel like, uh, would you describe your ex-husband, uh, Doug and Brenda's son, would you describe him as a Scientologist? Not at all. Total exactly. anti-Scientologist. And so I feel like they know anything they say to him is going to go to you, is going to go to me. And they're in a bit of a damned if you do, damned if you don't situation. It's almost like their best bet right now is just don't ask, don't tell. Don't tell. Uh, I'm sorry. What's what's your ex-husband's name? Michael. Don't tell Michael anything. Don't ask Michael anything. Don't ask him if he's in touch with Reese. Don't ask him if he's seeing Huxley. If, if we don't ask him, he can't tell us anything. If he doesn't tell us anything, we can't report anything. You know, hear no evil, see no evil, um, speak no evil. And they are screwed. Now, now, now that doesn't mean something like, I feel like the, the, the pressure is going to build up that they're going to do something stupid. They're going to do something that doesn't make any sense. They're going to do something to make the situation where someone in Scientology will demand that they handle or disconnect from uh, their son. I feel like 
and that's why you go, you just never know which way it's going to go. There's not necessarily a whole lot of rational reasoning that goes in to the things, you know, some order will come down from senior HCO. Some order will come down from the scavenge because the SPTV and you're one of the major channels on SPTV. SPTV is one of David Miscavige's biggest headaches right now. You've got Leah Remini's lawsuit. You've got the grand jury investigation into obstruction of justice. You've got the Jane Doe's, um, the, the Jane Doe's and the Danny Masters in case their civil lawsuit against Scientology. You've got Valeska Paris and the Baxter's lawsuit against Scientology. That's on the legal front, but on the PR front, um, SPTV is the biggest uh, threat to Miscavige other than the bad PR relating to all the lawsuits. And my point is, my point is you're being very open on your channel about Brenda and Doug, your ex-husband, their son, your, your son. Someone at some point is going to demand that something be done about it. And we don't know when that's going to happen. At some point that will probably happen. We don't know when that will be. We don't know exactly what it will look like. But it'll just be another shit show for Scientology. Huh. And, okay. um, and, and that's why I say, if you say nothing, if you say nothing happens, I'll give you a reason why that makes sense. If you say something horrible happened, I'll give you a reason why that makes sense. It's just a matter of when, you know? And you know, what's funny about that guys is what Aaron just said about the, the lawsuits, but then also us being on the PR front of this, when I, the whole upbringing in Scientology and Aaron, you probably have experienced this too. My dad, uh, everybody at the org that I worked with, Anytime there was a lawsuit, anytime anything bad, they would go, that's great. We're excited about this because that just means we're winning. They're kicking and screaming. <laughs> right. I'm serious. My dad used to he get went. so giddy about it. He'd be like, good. There's something bad PR about Scientology. We're winning. We're waking people up. They're kicking and screaming the SPs. Like they would have, they'd be like, hip, hip, hooray. And look to LRH when we there was bad PR in the news. That's right. So- I'm see. I was such a thing. My dad would get so excited over it and be like, "We're winning! This just shows we're winning. We're waking everybody up." Do you think that's what they're still thinking? <laughs> oh, you know, that's just something they tell themselves to make themselves feel better at fundraising events. The IAS fundraisers love to mention the signs of success policy when the SPs are going crazy. It's because we're winning. I should actually figure out how to start my videos with that. I just want to congratulate Scientology for winning so hard today because I've got some really um, terrible videos. So congratulations, Scientology. Congratulations. Yeah. You guys are kicking and screaming. Us, us <laughs> SPs are just kicking and screaming. <laughs> we are we just, just can't stand at the it. Mouth, you know, all their success. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Incredible. Guys, if you're one of the 2,800 people watching live right now, do us a favor and hit that like button, please. It's fast. It's easy. It's free. And um, it actually does seem to help, believe it or not, with the whole and subscribe algorithm. subscribe to me. And subscribe to Reese. Uh, link is in the description down below if you're watching on my channel. And um, yeah, stay tuned, guys. We got more video recordings tomorrow. Yeah, Thank we're going we're gonna to keep rolling these out. Thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks for everyone who watches until the very end. We'll talk to you guys soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, subscribe.